Athens by William Shakespeare, adapted by Taylor Phillips. Yay! Yay! Yay, Taylor! <laughs> Tonight, Thomas Grube will be playing. Simon of Athens. Marty Goldberg. Uh, Athenantis and Lucius. Bill Barry. Uh, jeweler and Flavor Flake. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie <laughs> Bozio. Yeah. <laughs> Alcibiades. 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 Or Alcibiades. <laughs> it depends on whether it, uh, you, yeah. you go with the. Thomas Kane. Ventidius Sempronius. Old Athenian and Isidore's servant. Michael Genove. Agnes, a poet and second stranger. Move your microphone, do something. Genove. Say that again? Okay, you're better now. We're better now? Yeah, oh, perfect. Okay. Tyler Bogan. Servilius Lucilius. First bandit and soldier. David Mackler. Timandra Lucullus, Lord, first stranger and messenger. Taylor Lynn. Uh, the senator, the servant, the painter, the second bandit, and Vero's servant. Wow. Act one, <laughs> scene one. <Wow>. <laughs> Athens, <laughs> a hall in Simone's house. Enter poet, painter, and jeweler, and others at several doors. Good day, sir. I have not seen you long. How goes the world? It wears, sir, as it grows. But, uh, and that well known, but, but what particular rarity, what, what strange, what manifold record not matters? Yeah, see, magic of bounty. All these spirits thy power hath conjured to attend. I know thy one's a jeweler. I have a jewel here. Oh, pray, let's see it. For the Lord Timon, sir. If you will touch the estimate, but for that... Well, when, when we for recompense have praised the vile, it stains the glory in that happy verse which aptly sings the good. Tis a good form. And rich. Here's a water. Look you. You are wrapped, sir, in some work, some dedication to the great lord. A thing slipped idly from me. Uh, our posy is as gum which oozes from whence tis nursed. The fire, it flints, shows not till it be stuck. Our gentle flame provokes itself like the current, flies each bound its shaft. Uh, what have you there? Um, a picture, sir. Oh. When comes your book forth? Uh, upon the heels of my presentment, sir. Let's see your piece. Is it good? Uh, it tutors nature. Artificial strife lives in these touches livelier than life. Enter certain senators and pass over. Ah, uh, the senators of Athens. Happy men. You see this confluence, this great flood of strangers? You see how all conditions, how all minds, as well as of glib and slippery creatures, as of grave and austere quality, tender down their services to Lord Timon. Ah, his large fortune upon his good and gracious nature hanging subdues and properties to his love and tendance all sorts of hearts. Yeah, from the glass face flatterer to Aperturnus, that few things loves better than to abhor himself. Even he drops down the knee before him and returns in peace, most rich in Timon's nod. I saw them speak together. Sir, I have upon a high and pleasant hill feigned fortune to be thrown. The base of the mount is ranked with all deserts, all kind of natures that labor on the bosom of this spear to propagate their states. 
Amongst them all whose eyes are on this sovereign lady fixed, one do I personate of Lorne Timon's fame, frame, whose fortune with her glory hand wafts to her, whose present grace to present slaves and servants translates his rivals. This conceived a scope. This throne, this fortune, and this hill, methinks, with one man beckoned from the rest below, bowing his head against the sleepy mount to climb his happiness, would be um, well expressed in our condition? Nay, sir, but hear me on. All those which were his fellows, but of late, some better than his value on the moment, follow his strides, his, lo his lobbies filled with pendants, Rain sacrificial whisperings in his ear, make sacred even his syrup, and through him drink the fine air. Ay, Mary, what of these? When fortune in her shift and change of mood spurns down her late beloved, all his dependents, which labored after him to the mountaintop, even on their knees and hands, let him slip down. Not one accompany him his declining foot. A thousand moral paintings I can show that shall demonstrate these quick blows of fortunes more pregnantly than words. Yet you do well to show Lord Timon that mean eyes have seen the foot above the head. Trumpet sound, enter Timon, addressing himself courteously to every suitor. He is accompanied by messenger talking with him, Lucilius and other servants following. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Sorry, waiting for this bloody thing. Okay. Uh, uh, imprisoned is he, say you? I, my good lord, five talents is his debt, his means most short, his creditors most straight. Your honorable letter he desires to those have shut him up, which failing periods his comfort. I am not of that feather to shake off my friend when he must need me. I do know him a gentleman that well deserves a help, which he shall have. I'll pay the debt and free him. Your lordship ever binds him. Commend me to him. I will send his ransom and, being enfranchised, bid him come to me. It is not enough to help the feeble up, but to support him after. Uh, fare you well. All happiness to your honor. Exit messenger, enter old Athenian. Lord Timon, Timon, hear me speak. Uh, freely, good father. Thou hast a servant named Lucillus, most noble Timon. Th call the man before thee. Attends he here or no? Uh, Lucilius. Here at your lordship's service. This fellow here, Lord Timon, this thy creature by night frequents my house. I am a man that from my first have been inclined to thrift, and my estate deserves an heir more raised than one which holds a trencher. Well, what further? Only one, oh, one only daughter have I, no kin else, on whom I may confer what I have got. The maid is fair, or the youngest for a bride, and I have bred her at my dearest cost in qualities of the best. The man, this man of thine attempts her love. I prithee, noble lord, join with me to forbid him her resort. Myself have spoken vain. The man is honest. <laughs> Therefore he will be. Timon, his honesty rewards him in itself. It must not bear my daughter. Does she love him? She is young and apt. Our own precedent passions do instruct us what levities in youth. Uh, love you, the maid. Hey, my good lord, and she accepts of it. If in her marriage my consort be my consent be missing, I call the gods to witness. I will choose mine heir from the fourth, from the beggars of the world, and dispossess her all. How shall she be endowed if she be mated with an equal husband? Three talents on the present, in future, all. 
This gentleman of mine hath served me long. Uh, to build his fortune I will strain a little, for tis a bond in men. Give him thy daughter. What you bestow in him I'll counterpoise and make him weigh with her. Most noble lord, pawn me to this your honor. She is his. My hand to thee, mine honor on my promise. Humbly, I thank your lordship. Never may the state of fortune fall into my keeping, which is not owed to you. Exeunt Lucilius and old Athenian. Poet comes forward presenting his poem. Oh, thanks my labor. Long live your lordship. I thank you. You shall hear from me anon. Uh, go not away. What have you there, my friend? The painter gives his painting. A piece of painting which I, I do beseech your lordship to accept. Painting is welcome. The painting is almost the natural man, for since dishonor traffics with man's nature, he is but outside. These penciled figures are even such as they give out. I like your work, and you shall find I like it. Uh, wait attendance till you hear further from me. The gods preserve you. Well, fare you well, gentlemen. Uh, give me your hand. <laughs> we must needs dine together. Uh, sir. Your jewel hath suffered under praise. What, my lord? Dispraise? A more satiety of commendations, if I should pay you for, for it as tis extolled, it would unclue me quite. My lord, tis rated as those which sell would give. But you well know things of like value, differing in the owners, are prized by their masters. Believe it, dear lord, you mend the jewel by the wearing it. Well mocked. <laughs> no, my good lord. He speaks the common tongue, which all men speak with him. Enter Apemantis. It's Apemantis, actually. Uh, look who comes here. Uh, will you be chid? We'll bear with your lordship. He'll spare none. Uh, uh, good morrow to thee, uh, gentle Apemantis. Till I be gentle, say thou for thy good morrow. When thou art Tamin's dog, and these knaves honest. Why dost thou call them knaves? Thou knowst them not. Are they not Athenians? Yes. Then I repent not. You know me, Apermatus? Though knowest I do, I call thee by thy name. Thou art proud, Apermatus. Of nothing so much as that I am not like Timon. Whither art thou, whither, whither, whither art going? To knock out an honest Athenian's brains. That's a deed thou'll die for. Huh, right, if doing nothing be death by the law. Seatman shows the gifted painting. How likest thou this picture, Apermatus? The best, or the innocence. Wrought he not well that painted it? He wrought better that made the painter, and yet he is but a filthy piece of work. You're a dog. <laughs> Thy mother's of my generation. <laughs> what she, if I be a dog? Uh, will dine with me, Apermatus? No, I eat not lords. Thou shouldst, thou'dst anger ladies. Oh, they eat lords. <laughs> so they come by great bellies. That's a lascivious apprehension. So thou apprehendst it. Take it for thy labor. Uh, how dost thou like this jewel, Apermantus? Not so well as plain dealing, which will not cost a man a do it. What dost thou think tis worth? Not worth my thinking. How now, poet? How oh, now, philosopher? <laughs> thou liest. Art not one? Yes. Then I lie not. Art not a poet? Yes. Then thou liest. Look in thy last work, where thou hast framed him a worthy fellow. That's not saved. He is so. Yes, he is worthy of thee, and to pay thee for thy labor. He that loves to be flattered is worthy, oh, the flatterer. Heavens, 
that I were a lord. What wouldst thou do then, Appomattus? Even as Appomattus does now, hate a lord with my heart. What, thyself? I. Wherefore? That I had no angry wit to be a lord. Trumpet sounds, enter messenger. What trumpet's that? Ah, uh, tis Alcibiades, and some twenty horse, all of companionship. Uh, pray entertain them, give them guide to us. Exeunt attendants with messenger. You must needs dine with me. Uh, go not you hence till I have thanked you. When dinner's done, show me this piece. I am joyful of your sights. Oh. And most Enter welcome. Alcibiades with the rest. Most welcome, sir. They bow so, to each other. So, so, so there. Aches contract and starve your supple joints, that there should be small love amongst these sweet knaves. And all this courtesy, <laughs> the strain of man's bread out into baboon and monkey. Sir, you have saved my longing, and I feed most hungrily on your sight. Right, welcome, sir. Ere we depart, we'll share a bounteous time and different pleasures. Pray you, let us in. Exeunt all but Appomantus enter a lord. Oh, uh, uh, what time of day is it, Appomantus? Time to be honest. <laughs> that time serves still. <laughs> the more cursed thou, that still omits it. Uh, thou art going to Lord Timon's feast. I to see meat-filled knaves and wine-heat fools. Fare thee well, fare thee well. Thou art a fool to bid me farewell twice. Why, Epimentus? Shouldst have kept one to thyself, for I mean to give thee none. <laughs> Hang thyself. No, I will do nothing at thy bidding. <laughs> Make thy request to thy friend. Away, unpeaceable dog. Or I'll spurn thee hence. I will fly like a dog, the heels of the ass. <laughs> exit, exit. He's opposite to humanity. I shall go in and taste Lord Timon's bounty. He outgoes the very heart of kindness. He pours it out. Plutus, the god of gold, is but his steward. No mead, but he repays sevenfold above itself. <laughs> No gift to him, but breeds the giver a return exceeding all use of quittance. The noblest mind he carries that ever governed man. Long may he live in fortunes. Exit Lord. Scene two. A banqueting room in Timmons house. Hot boys playing loud music. A great banquet served in. Flavius and others attending. <clears throat> Enter Timon, Alcibiades, Lord, Senators, and Ventidius, who Lord Timon has bailed. Then comes, dropping after all, Appomantus, discontentedly like himself. Most honored Timon, it hath pleased the gods to remember my father's age and call him to long peace. He has gone happy and has left me rich. Then, as in grateful virtue I am bound to, you, to your free heart, I do return these talents, doubled with thanks and service, from whose help I derived liberty. Oh, by... Ventidius offices first. Oh, by no means, honest Ventidius. You mistake my love. I gave it freely ever, and there's none can truly say he gives if he receives. If our betters play at that game, we must not dare to imitate them. Faults that are rich are fair. Oh. A noble spirit. Nay, my lord, ceremony was but devised at first to set a gloss on faint deeds, hollow welcomes, recanting goodness, uh, sorry air to show. But where there is true friendship, there needs none. Right, sit. More welcome are you to my fortunes than my fortunes to me. They my lord, said. we always have confessed it. Ho, 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 confessed it, hanged it, have you not? Oh, Appomantus, you are welcome. No, you shall not make me welcome. I come to have thee thrust me out of doors. 
Fie, thou art a churl. You've got a humour there, does not become a man. Tis much to blame. They say, my lords, ira furifura brevis est, but yon man is ever angry. Uh, go, let him have a table by himself, for he does neither affect com company, nor is he fit for it indeed. Let me stay at thine apparel, Timon. I come to observe. I give thee, I give thee warning on it. I take no heed of thee. Thou art an Athenian, therefore welcome. I myself would have no power for thee. Let my meat make thee silent. I scorn thy meat. T'would choke me, for I should ne never flatter thee. O oh, you gods, what a number of men eat Timon, and he sees them not. It grieves me to see so many dip their meat in one man's blood, and all the madnesses he cheers them up to. I wonder men dare trust themselves with men. The fellow that sits next to him now parts bread with him, pledges the breath of him in a divided draft, is the readiest man to kill him. Great men should drink with harness on their throats. My lord, in heart, and let the health go round. Let it flow this way, my good lord. Flow this way, a brave fellow. He keeps his tides well. Those healths will make thee and thy state look ill. Timon, immortal gods, I crave no health. I pray for no man but myself. Grant I may never prove so fond. Can't hear you. To trust said, the man on his oath or bond, or a harlot for her weeping, or a dog that seems a sleeping, or a keeper with my freedom, or my friends, if I should need him. Amen. So fall to it. Rich men sin, and I eat through it. He eats and drinks. Much good ditch thy good heart. Appomatus. Captain Alcibiades, your heart's in the field now. Oh, my heart is ever at your service, my lord. You had rather be at a breakfast of enemies than a dinner of friends. <laughs> so there were bleeding new, my lord. There's no meat like them. I could wish my best friend at such a feast. Would all those flatterers were thine enemies, then that then thou might kill him and bid me to him. Um, might we but have that happiness, my lord, that you would once use our hearts, whereby we might express some part of our zeals. We should think ourselves forever perfect. Oh, no doubt, my good friends, but the gods themselves have provided that I shall have much help from you. How had you been my friends else? <laughs> Why have you that charitable title from thousands? Did not you chiefly belong to my heart? I have told more of you to myself uh, than you can with modesty speak in your own behalf, and thus far I confirm you. Oh, you gods, think I, what need we have any friends if we should ne'er have need of them? They were the most needless creatures living, should we ne'er have use for them? and would most resemble sweet instruments hung up in cases that, that keep their sounds to themselves. Why, I have often wished myself poorer that I might come nearer to you. We are born to do benefits, and what better or proper can we, can our own, than the riches of our friends? Oh, what a precious comfort it is to have so many like brothers commanding one another's fortunes. Oh, joy e'en made away, ere it can be born. Mine eyes cannot hold out water, methinks. <laughs> to forget their faults, I drink to you. Thou weepest to make them drink, Timon. Joy had the like conception in our eyes, and at that instant, like a babe sprung up. <laughs> I laugh to think that a babe, a bastard. I promise you, my lord, 
You moved me much. <laughs> much? <laughs> you see, my lord, how ample you're beloved. Uh, Flavius? My lord? Uh, the little casket. Uh, bring me hither. Uh, yes, my lord. More jewels yet? There is no crossing him in his humor. Else I should tell him well, I think I should. When all spent, he'd be crossed then, and then he could. His pity bounty had not eyes behind. That man might ne'er be wretched for his mind. Exit, Flavius. My friends, I have one word to say to you. Uh, look you, my good lord, I must entreat you. Re-enter Flavius with the casket. Honor me so much as to advance this jewel. Accept it and wear it, kind my lord. I am so far already in your gifts. Uh, so are we all. Enter servant. My lord, there are certain nobles of the Senate newly alighted and come to visit you. They are fairly welcome. Exit servant. I, I beseech your honor, vouchsafe me a word. It does concern you near. Near? By then, another time I'll hear thee. I prithee, let's be provided to show them entertainment. I scarce know how. We enter servant. May it please your honor, Lord Lucius, out of his free love, hath presented to you four milk-white horses strapped in silver. I shall accept them fairly. Uh, let the presents be worthily entertained. Uh, please you, my lord. And that honorable gentleman, Lord Lucullus, entreats your company tomorrow to hunt with him. And has sent your honor two brace of greyhounds. I'll hunt with him and let them be received, not without fair reward. Exit servant. What will this come to? He commands us to provide and give great gifts and all out of an empty coffer? Nor will he show his purse or yield me this to show him what a beggar his heart is, being of no power to make his wishes good. His promises fly so beyond his state that what he speaks is all in debt. He owes for every word. He is so kind that he now pays interest for his lands put to their books. Well, would I, would I were gently put out of office before I were forced out. Happier is that he has no friend to feed than such do en enemies exceed. I bleed inwardly for my lord. Exit Flavius. You do yourselves much wrong. You bake too much of your own merits. Uh, here, my lord, a trifle of our love. <laughs> you gave good words the other day uh, of a bay courser I rode on. Tis yours, because you liked it. Oh, I beseech you, pardon me, my lord, in that. Uh, you may take my word, my lord. I know no man can justly praise but what he does affect. I weigh my friend's affection with mine own. I'll tell you true, I'll call to you. Oh, none so welcome. I take all and your several visitations so kind to heart. Tis not enough to give. Methinks I could deal kingdoms to my friends and ne'er be weary. <laughs> Alcibiades, thou art a soldier, therefore seldom rich. It comes in charity to thee for all thy living is amongst the dead, and all the lands thou hast lie in a pitched field. Aye, defiled land, my lord. We are so virtuously bound. And so am I to you. So infinitely endeared. All to you. Lights, more lights. The best of happiness, honor, and fortunes keep with you, Lord Timon. Ready for his friends. What are coils here, Ser serving of becks and jutting out of bums? I doubt whether their legs be worn the, th the sums that are given for them. Friendships full of dregs, methinks false hearts should never have sound legs. Thus honest fools lay out their wealth on courtesies. Now, Appomattus, if thou wert not sullen, I would be good to thee. No. I'll nothing, for if I should be bribed too, then then there would be none left to rail upon thee, and then thou wouldst sin the faster. Thou givest so long, Timon, I fear me thou wilt give away thyself in paper shortly. What need these feasts, pomps, and vain glories? 
Nay, and you begin to rail on society once, I am sworn not to give reward to you. Farewell, and come with better music. Exit Tyman. So, thou wilt not hear me now, thou shalt not then. I'll lock thy heaven from thee, O, oh, that men's ears should be to counsel death, but not to flattery. Exit Apimantis, Apimantis. Act two, scene one, a senator's house. Enter senator with papers in hand. And late 5,000. To Varro and to Isidore, he owes 9,000, besides my former sum, which makes it five and 20. Still in motion of raging waste. It cannot hold, it will not. If I want gold, steal but a beggar's dog and give it Tymon, why, a dog coins gold. If I would sell my horse and buy 20 more, better than he, why, give my horse to Tymon. Ask nothing, give it him. It falls me straight and able horses. No porter at his gate, and but rather one that smiles and still invites all that pass by. It cannot hold. No reason can found his state in safety. Cephas, ho! Oh. Enter Cephas. Here, yeah, sir, what is your pleasure? Get on your cloak and haste you to Lord Tymon. Importune him for my monies. Be not ceased with slight denial, nor then silence when commend me to your master and the cap plays in the right hand thus, but tell him my uses cry to me. I must serve my turn out of mine own. His days and times are past and my reliances on his fracted dates have smit my credit. I love and honor him, but must not break my back to heal his finger. Immediate are my needs and my relief must not be tossed and turned to me in words, but find supply immediate. Get you gone? Put on a most importunate aspect, a visage of demand, for I do fear when every feather sticks in his own wing, Lord Tymon will be left a naked gull, which flashes now a phoenix. Get you gone! Take the bonds along with you and have the dates in contempt. Oh, Exeunt. Scene two, the same. A hall in Timon's house. Enter Flavius with many, with many bills in his hand. No care, no stop, so senseless of expense that he will neither know how to maintain it nor seize his flow of riot. Takes no account how things go from him, nor resumes no care of what is to continue. Never mind was to be so unwise, to be so kind. What? shall be done. He will not hear till Phil. I must be round with him. Now he comes from hunting. Fie, 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 fie! And enter Cephas and Isidore's servant and Varro's servant severally. What do you mean, what? You come for money? Not your business, too. It, it isn't. And yours, too, Isidore? It is so. Would we were all discharged. Oh, here comes the Lord. Enter Timon with his train, Alcia Bates. Uh, so soon as dinner is done, we'll forth again, my Alcibiades. Uh, my Lord, uh, here is a note of certain news. Do uh, go to my steward. <laughs> Please, it's your lordship. He hath put me off to the succession of new days this month. Well, my master is awake by great occasion to call apart his own and humbly pray you that with your other noble parts you'll suit suit in, in giving him his right. Mine honest friend, I prithee, but repair to me next morning. Nay, nay, good my lord. Contain thyself, good friend. Uh, one Varro's servant, my good lord. From Isidore, he humbly plays your speedy payment. Uh, if you know, my lord, my master wants... Uh, What's due on forfeiture, my lord? Six weeks and past. Your steward puts me off, my lord, and, and I am sent expressly to your lordship. 
Excuse me, Brett. <laughs> I do beseech you, good my lords, keep on. I'll wait upon you instantly. <sighs> uh, come hither. Pray you, how goes the world that I am thus encountered with clamorous demands of debt, broken bonds, and the detention of long since due debts against mine honor? Please, you gentlemen, this time is unagreeable to this business. Your importancy has ceased till after dinner, that I may make his lordship understand wherefore you are not paid. Uh, do so, my friends. Uh, see them well entertained. Pray, draw near. Exeunt. Timon and Flavius, enter Apimantus. Hey, hey, here comes the fool Apimantus. Let's uh, some sport with him. Hang him. Who'll abuse us? A plague upon him. Dog! How dost, fool? Dost dialogue with thy shadow? I speak to thee. No, tis to thyself. <laughs> There's the fool's Hangs on your back already. No, thou standest single. Thou art not on him yet. Where's the fool now? <laughs> he last asked the question, poor rogues and usurers men, bawds between gold and want. What are we, Abomantus? Asses. Oh. Why? That you ask me what you are and do not know yourselves. You three serve three usurers? Aye, would they served us? So would I, as good a trick as ever hangman served thief. Are you three usurers, men? I fool. I think no usurer but has a fool to his servant. When men come to borrow of your masters, they approach sadly and go away merry. We may account thee a whore, master, and a knave, which, notwithstanding, thou shalt be no less esteemed. What is a whore, master, fool? A fool in good clothes, and something like thee. Tis a spirit. Sometimes it appears like a lord, sometime like a lawyer, sometime like a philosopher, with two stones more than artificial one. Re-enter Lord Timon and Flavius. I go. Exit. Pray you, walk near. I'll speak with you and not. Exeum, Cephas, Varro's servant, and Isidore's servant. You make me marvel wherefore ere this time had you not fully laid my state before me that I might so have rated my expenses, I had leave of means. Would not hear me at many leisures I proposed. Go to, perchance some single vantages you took when my indisposition put you back and that unaptness made you minister thus to excuse yourself. Oh, my good Lord, at many times I brought in my accounts, laid them before you, I'd throw them off and say that you found them in mine honesty. When for some trifling present you have bid me return so much, I shook my head and wept. Yea, against the authority of manners, prayed you to hold your hand more close. I did endure, not seldom nor, nor slight checks, when I have prompted you in the ebb of your estate in your great flow of debts. My loved Lord, though you hear now too late, yet now's a time. The greatest of your having lacks a half to pay your present debts. Uh, let all my land be sold. Tis all engaged, some forfeited and gone, and what remains will hardly stop the mouth of present dues. The future comes apace. What shall defend the interim? And at length, how goes our reckoning? Uh, to last, uh, Damien, uh, did my land extend? Oh, my good Lord, the world is but a word. Were it all to yours to give it in a breath, how quickly were it gone? You tell me true. If you suspect my husbandry or falsehood, call me before the exactest auditors and set me on the proof. So the gods bless me, when all our offices have been oppressed with riotous feeders, when our vaults have wept with drunken spillet of wine, when every room hath blazed with lights 
and braid with ministry, I have retired me to a wasteful cock and set mine eyes at flow. Prithee, no more. Heavens, have I said the bounty of this Lord? How many prodigal bits have slaves and presents this night engulfed it? Who is not tyrants? What heart, head, sword, force means but is Lord Timon's? Great Timon, noble, worthy, royal Timon. Ah, when the means are gone that by this praise, the breath is gone whereof this praise is made. Feast won, fast lost, one cloud of winter showers, these flies are couched. Come, sermon me no further. No villainous bounty yet has passed my heart. Unwisely, not ignobly have I given. Why dost thou weep? Canst thou the conscience lack to think I shall lack friends? Secure thy heart. If I would broach the vessels of my love and try the argument of hearts by borrowing, men and men's fortunes could I frankly use as I can bid thee speak. Assurance, bless your thoughts. And in some sort these wants of mine are crowned, that I account them blessings. For by these shall I try friends. You shall perceive how you mistake my fortunes. I am wealthy in my friends. Within there, Servilius. My lord, my lord. I will dispatch you severally. Uh, you to Lord Lucius, uh, you to Lord uh, Lucullus, uh, uh, you, uh, I hunted with his honor today, uh, you to Sempronius. Uh, commend me to their loves, and I am proud to say that my occasions have found time to use them toward a supply of money. Let the request be 50 talents. As you have said, my lord. Exit Servilius. Oh, Lord Lucius and Lucullus. Hmm. Uh, go you, sir, to the senators, of whom even the state's best health I have deserved this hearing. Bid them send the instant a thousand talents to me. I have been bold, for that I knew it the most general way to them to use your signet and your name, but they do shake their heads, and I am here no richer in return. Is it true? Can't be? Can't be. They answer in a joint and corporate voice that now they are at fall. Want treasure, cannot do what they would, are sorry. You are honorable, but yet they could have not wished. They know not something hath been amiss. A noble nature may catch a wrench. Word all were well, tis pity. And so, intending other serious matters after distasteful looks and these hard fractions with certain half caps and cold moving nods, they froze me into silence. You gods reward them. Pretty man, look cheerly. These old fellows have their ingratitude in them hereditary. Their blood is caked, uh, it is cold, it seldom flows. It is lack of kindly warmth, they are not kind. And nature, as it grows again toward earth, is fashioned for the journey dull and heavy. Go to Ventidius. Pretty, be not sad. Thou art true and honest, ingeniously I speak. No blame belongs to thee. Ventidius lately buried his father, by whose death he stepped into a great estate. When he was poor, imprisoned, and in scarcity of friends, I cleared him with five talents. Beat him from me. Uh, bid him suppose some good necessity touches his friend, uh, which craves to be remembered with those five talents. That had give these fellows to whom tis instant due. Ne'er speak or think that Timon's fortunes among his friends can sink. Exit Timon. I would, I could not think it, that thought is bounty's foe. Being free itself, it thinks all others so. Oh. Exit Flavius. Act three, scene one. A room in Lucullus's house. Servilius Cerv waiting, enter Lucullus. One of Lord Timon's men? A gift, I warrant. Why, this hits right. I dreamt of a silver basin in your tonight. <laughs> uh, Servilius, honest Servilius, you are very respectfully, respectively welcome, sir. And, and how does that honorable, complete, free-hearted gentleman of Athens, thy very bountiful good lord and master? His health 
His, his health is well, sir. I am right glad that his health is well, sir. And what hast thou there under thy cloak, pretty Sir Villius? Faith, nothing but an empty box, sir, which in my lord's behalf I come to entreat your honor to supply, who, having great and instant occasion to use 50 talents, hath sent to your lordship to furnish him, uh, nothing doubting your present assistance therein. <laughs> la, 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 la. Nothing doubting, says he. Alas, good lord, a noble gentleman tis, if he would not keep so good a house. Many a time and often I had dined with him and told him on it and come again to supper to him of purpose to have him spend less. And yet he would embrace no counsel, take no warning by my coming. Every man has his fault and honesty is his. I had told him on it, but I could ne'er get him from it. Sevilius, I have noted thee always wise. I have observed thee always for a towardly prompt spirit. Give thee thy due, and one that knows what belongs to reason and canst use the time well, if the time use thee well. Good parts in thee, draw nearer on a Servilius. Thy lord's a bountiful gentleman, but thou art wise, and thou knowest well enough, although thou comest to me, that this is no time to lend money, especially upon bare friendship without security. Here's uh, three solidaris for thee. He gives Servilius some money. Oh, ah. good, boy. good boy. Wink at me and say thou sawest me not. Fare thee well. It's possible the world should so much differ and we alive that lived why, damn baseness to him that worshiped thee. He throws the money back at Luke Cullis. <laughs> now I see thou art a fool and fit for thy master. Exit Luke Cullis. May these add to the number that may scald thee. Let molten coin be thy damnation. Thou disease of a friend and not himself. As friendship such a faint and milky heart, it turns in less than two nights. Oh, you gods, I feel master's passion. The, this slaves unto his honor has my lord's meat in him. Why should it thrive and turn into turn to nutriment when he is turned to poison? Oh, may diseases only work upon... I and when he sick to death, let not that part of nature which my lord paid for be of any power to expel sickness but prolong his hour. Exit Servilius. Scene two, a public place. Enter Lucius with two strangers. <clears throat> Who? The Lord Timon? He is my very good friend and an honorable gentleman. We know him for no less, though we are but strangers to him. But I can tell you one thing, my lord, and which I hear from common rumors. Now, Lord Timon's happy hours are done and past, and his estate shrinks from him. Bye. No, do not believe it. He cannot want for money. But believe you this, my lord. <laughs> that not long ago, one of his men was with the Lord Lucilius to borrow so many talents, uh, nay, urged extremely for it, and showed what necessity belonged to it, and yet was declined. How? I tell you, denied, my Lord. What a strange case was that. Now, before the gods, I am ashamed on it. Denied that honorable man? Oh, there was very little honor shown in it. For my own part, I must needs confess I have received some small kindnesses from him as money, plate, jewels, and such trifles, nothing comparing to his. Yet had he mistook him and sent to me, I should never have denied his occasion so many talents. Enter Servilius. 
see by good hap. Yonder's my lord. I have sweat to see his honor. My honored lord. Servilius, you are kindly met, sir. Fare thee well. Command me to thy honorable, virtuous lord, my very exquisite friend. Lucius stops to exit. May it please your honor, my lord, has sent. Ha! Huh. What has he sent? I am so much endeared to that lord. His ever, he's ever sending. How shall I thank him, thinkest thou? And what has he sent now? Has only sent his present occasion now, my lord, requesting your lordship to supply his instant use with 50 talents. I know his lordship is but merry with me. He cannot want 5,500 talents. But in the meantime, he wants less, my lord. Dost thou speak seriously, Servilius? Upon my soul, tis true, sir. What a wicked beast was I to disfurnish myself against such a good time, when I might have shown myself honorable. How unlucky it happened that I should purchase the day before for a little part and a do a great deal of honor. Servilius, now before the gods, I am not able to do Oh, the more beast, I say. I was sending to use Lord Time and myself. These gentlemen can witness, but I would not for the wealth of Athens. I had done it now. Commend me bountifully to his good lordship, and I hope his honor will conceive the fairest of me, because I have no power to be kind. And tell him this from me. I count it one of my greatest afflictions say that I cannot pleasure such an honorable gentleman. Good civilius, will you befriend me so far as to use mine own words to him? Yes, sure. I, yes, sir, I shall. I'll look you out a good turn, civilius. Exit, civilius. True, as you said, Timon is shrunk indeed, and he that's once denied will hardly speed. Exit Lucius. Do you observe this, Hostilius? Hey, too well. Hmm. Why, this is the world's soul, and just of the same piece is every flatterer's sport. Who can call him his friend that dips in the same dish? For in my knowing, Timon has been this lord's father and kept his credit with his purse, supported his estate, Nay, Timon's money has paid his men their wages. He ne'er drinks, but Timon's silver treads upon his lip. And yet, oh, see the monstrousness of man when he looks out in an ungrateful shape. He does deny him in respect of his. <clears throat> what charitable men afford to beggars. Oh, religion groans at it. <laughs> but for mine own part. I never tasted time in, in my life, nor came to any of his bounties over me to mark me for his friend. Yet I protest for his right noble mind, illustrious virtue and honorable carriage has his necessity made use of me. I, I would have put my wealth into donation and, and the best half should have returned to him. So much I love his heart, but I perceive Men must learn now with pity to dispense, for policy sits above conscience. Exeunt. Scene three. A room in Sempronius's house. Enter Sempronius and Servilius. Must, be, must he needs trouble me in it? Hmm. Above all others? He might have tried Lord Lucius or Lucullus. And now Ventidius is wealthy too, whom he redeemed from prison. All these owe their estates unto him. My lord, they have all been touched and found in base metal, for they have all denied him. How? How have they denied him? Has Ventidius and Lucullus denied him? And does he send to me three? Hmm. It shows but little love or judgment in him. Must I be his last refuge? His friends, like physicians, thrive, give him over? Must I take the cure upon me? Hath much disgraced me in it. I'm angry at him. 
that might have known my place. I see no sense for it, but his occasion might have wooed me first. For in my conscience, I was the first man that e'er received gift from him. And does he think to so backwardly of me now that I'll, I'll requite its last? No. So it may prove an argument of laughter to the rest and amongst God, lords be thought a fool. I'd rather than the worth of thrice the sum have said to me first. But for my mind's sake, I'd such a courage to do him good. But now return, and with their faint reply this answer join. Who baits mine honor shall not know my coin. Exit Sempronius. Excellent. Your lordship's a goody, good, goodly villain. The devil knew not what he did when he made man politic. He crossed himself by it, and I cannot think. Think, but in the end, the villainies of man will set him clear how fairly he, this lord strives to appear foul, takes virtuous copies to be wicked, like those that under hot ardent zeal would set whole realms on fire. Of such a nature in his politic love. This was my lord's best hope. Now all are fled, save only the gods. Now his friends are dead, doors that were near acquainted with their wards. Many a bounteous year must be employed now to guard sure their master. And this is all a liberal course allows. Who cannot keep his wealth must keep his house. Exit Servilius. Scene for the same, a hall in Timon's house. Enter Varro's servant, Isidore's servant, and other creditor's men waiting. Well, that's good morrow. The like to you, kind Varro. What, do we meet together? Aye, and I think one business does command us all. Oh, for mine is money. So is theirs and ours. Enter hmm. Cephas. Good day at once. What do you think the hour? Laboring for nine. Is, is not my lord seen yet? Not yet. I wonder on it. He was wont to shine at seven. Aye, but the days are waxed shorter with him. You must consider that a prodigal course is like the sun's, but not like his. Recoverable. I fear it's his deepest winter in Lord Timon's purse. That is one may reach deep enough and yet find little. Your Lord sends now for money? Most true, he does. And, and he wears jewels now of Timon's gift for which I wait for money? It is against my heart. Mark, how strange it shows. Timon, in this should pay more than he owes. And Aaron, as, as your Lord should wear rich jewels, and send for money for him. I'm weary of this charge, the gods can witness. I know my lord hath spent of Timon's wealth, and now ingratitude makes it worse than stealth. Yes, mine's uh, 3,000 crowns, what's yours? 5,000, mine. Mm. Enter Flavius in a cloak, ha. muffled. Ha, is that not his steward muffled so? He goes away in a cloud. Call him, call him. By your leave, sir. Do you hear me, sir? Oh, what do you ask of me, my friend? We wait for certain money here, sir. Aye, if money were as certain as you're waiting, twere sure enough. Why then, preferred you not your sums and bills when your false masters eat of my lord's meat? Then you could smile and fawn upon his debts and take down the interest into their gluttonous maws. Look, you do yourselves but wrong to stir me up. Let me pass quietly. Believe it, my lord, and I have made an end. I have no more to reckon he to spend. Exit Flavius. How? What does his cashiered worship mutter? No matter what, he's poor, and that's revenge enough. Enter Servilius. <laughs> Here's Servilius. Now she well we shall know some answer. 
If I might beseech you, gentlemen, to repair some other hour, I should derive much from it, for take it of my soul, my lord leans wondrously to discontent. His comfortable temper has forsook him. He's much out of health and keeps his chamber. Oh, many do keep their chambers, are not sick. And if it be so far beyond his health, methinks he should the sooner pay his debts and make a clear way to the gods. Good job, good gods. We cannot take this for answer, sir. A cry within. Enter Timon in a rage. What are my doors opposed against my passage? Have I been ever free, and must my house be my retentive enemy, my jail? The place which I have feasted, does it now, like all mankind, show me an iron heart? My lord, here is my bill. Here's mine. And, the, and mine, lord, lord. Uh, all our bills. Knock me down with some cleave me to the, to the girdle. Alas, my lord. Cut my heart in sums. Mine, sir. Tell out my blood. Five thousand crowns, my lord. Five thousand drops pays that. What's yours and yours? Tear, tear me, take me, and the gods fall upon you. They, uh, I perceive our masters may throw their caps at their money. These debts may well be called desperate ones, for a madman owns it. Exeunt all creditors, men, and servilius. Re-enter Timon and Flavius. I have e'en put my breath from me to slaves. Creditors? <laughs> Devils. My dear lord. What if it should be so? My lord. I'll have it so. My steward. Here, my lord. So fitly, go bid all my friends again. Uh, Lucius, Lucullus, and, and Sepronius, all. I'll once more feast the rascals. Oh, my lord, you only speak from your distracted soul. There is not so much left to furnish out a moderate table. Oh, be it not in thy care. Go, I charge thee, invite them all. Let in the tide of knaves once more. My cook and I'll provide. Exeunt, scene five, the same, the Senate House. Senators sitting with Alcia Beatty's attended meeting with them. The fault's bloody. Tis necessary he should die. Nothing emboldens sin so much as mercy. The law shall bruise him. Honor, health, and compassion to the Senate. Now, Captain? I am an humble suitor to your virtues. For pity is the virtue of the law, and none but tyrants use it cruelly. It pleases time and fortune to lie heavy upon a friend of mine who in hot blood hath stepped into the law, which is passed so which is passed depth to those that without he do plunge into it. He is a man, setting his fate aside, of comely virtues. Nor did he soil the fact with cowardice and honor in him which buys out his fault, but with a noble fury and fair spirit, seeing his reputation touched to death, he did oppose his foe, and with such sober and unnoted passion he did behave his anger. It was spent as if he had but proved an argument. You undergo too strict a paradox, striving to make an ugly deed look fair. Your words have took such pains as if they labored to bring manslaughter into form and set quarreling upon the head of valor, which indeed is valor misbegot and came into the world when sex and factions were newly born. He's truly valiant <clears throat> that can wisely suffer the worst man that can breathe and make his wrongs his outsides, to wear them like his raiment, carelessly, and ne'er prefer his injuries to his heart to bring it into danger. If wrongs be evils and enforce us kill, what folly tis to hazard life for ill. My lord. We cannot make gross sins look clear. To revenge is no valor but to bear. My lord's then under favor, pardon me if I speak like a captain. 
why do fond men expose themselves to battle and not endure all threats? Uh, sleep upon it and let the foes quietly cut their throats without repugnancy. If there be such valor in the barren, what make we abroad? Why then, women are more valiant that stay at home if bearing carry it, and the ass more captain than the lion, the felon loaden with irons, wiser than the judge, if wisdom be in suffering. Oh, my lords, as you are great, be pitifully good. Who cannot condemn rashness and cold blood? To kill, I grant, is sin's extremest gust, but in defense by mercy tis most just, to be in anger is impiety. But who is man that is not angry? Why but the crime with this? You breathe in vain. In vain? His service done at Lacedaemon and Byzantium were sufficient briber for his life. I say, my lords, he has done fair service and slain in fight many of your enemies. How full of valor did he bear himself in the last conflict and made plenteous wounds. He has made too much plenty with them. He's a sworn rioter. He has a sin that often drowns him and takes his valor prisoner. If there were no foes, that were enough to overcome him. In that beastly fury he has been known to commit outrages and cherish factions. Tis inferred to us his days are foul and his drink dangerous. He dies. Oh, hard fate. Uh, he might have died in war, my lords, if not for any parts in him. Uh, though his right arm might purchase his own time and be in debt to none. Uh, yet more to move you. Uh, take my desserts to his and join them both. And I'm sorry, I have something in my eye. And for I know your reverend ages love security. I'll pawn my victories, all my honors to you, upon his good returns. If by this crime he owes the law his life, why, let the war receive it in valiant gore for, gore, for law is strict and war is nothing more. We are for law. He dies. Urge it no more, on height of our displeasure. Friend or brother, he forfeits his own blood that spills another. Must it be so? It must not be. Oh, my lords, I do beseech you, know me. Call me to your remembrances. I cannot think but your age has forgot me. It could not be else, be I should prove so base to sue and be denied such common grace. My wounds ache at you. Do you dare our anger? Tis in few words, but spacious in effect. We banish thee forever. Banish me? Banish your dotage. Banish usury. That makes the Senate ugly. If, after two days shine, Athens contain thee, attend our weightier judgment. And, not to swell our spirit, he shall be executed presently. I do, Senator. Now the gods keep you old enough that you may live only in bone, and none may look on you. I'm worse than mad. I have kept back their foes while they have told their money and let out their coin upon large interest. I myself which only in large hurts. All those for this? Is this the balsam that the usuring senate pours into captain's wounds? Banishment. It comes not ill. I hate not to be banished. It is a word it is a cause worthy my spleen and fury that I may strike at Athens. I'll cheer up my discontented troops and lay for our hearts to honor with most lands to be at odds. Soldiers should brook as little wrongs as gods. Exit Alcibiades. Scene six, the same. A banquet room in Timon's house. Music, table set out, servants attending. Enter Lucius, Sempronius, Lucullus. Lords, senators, and more. Good time of day to you, sir. I, I also want to wish it to you. I think this honorable lord did try us this other day. 
Upon that were my thoughts firing, firing when we encountered. I hope it is not so low with him as he made it seem in the trial of his several friends. It should not be by the persuasion of his new feasting. I should think so. He hath sent me an earnest inviting, which many my near occasions did urge me to put off. But he hath conjured me beyond them, and I must needs appear. In like matter was I in debt to my import, in, import to net, into my important business, but he would not hear my excuse. I am sorry when he sent to borrow of me that my provision was out. Every man hears so. What would he have borrowed of you? He sent to me, sir. Uh, here he comes. With all my heart, gentlemen, and how fare you? Ever at the best, hearing well of your lordship. The swallow follows not one summer more willing than we, your lordship. No more willing leaves winter such summer birds or men. Uh, gentlemen, our dinner will not recompense this long stay. Uh, feast your ears with the music a while. Uh, if they will fare so harshly or the trumpet sound, we shall to it presently. I hope it remains not unkindly with your lordship that I returned you an empty messenger. Oh, sir, let it not trouble you. My noble lord, I... I my, my, my good friend, what cheer? Uh, my most honorable lord, I am... And I'm sick of shame that when your lordship this other day sent to me, I was so unfortunate a beggar. Think not on it, sir. If you had sent but two hours before. Let it not cumber your better remembrance. Uh, come, bring it in, bring in all together. All covered dishes. Royal cheer, I warrant you. Doubt, Doubt not. not Doubt not that, if money and the season can yield it. How do you? What's the news? Alcibiades is banished. I hear you of it? Alcibiades banished? Tis so, be sure of it. How? I, I pray you, upon what? My worthy friends, will you draw in here? I'll tell you more anon. Here's a noble feast, toward. Each man to his stool with that spur as he would to the lip of his mistress. Your diet shall be in all places alike. Make not a city feast of it to let the meat cool ere we agree upon the first place. Sit, sit. Ah. The gods require our thanks. You great benefactors sprinkle our society with thankfulness. For your own gifts make yourselves praised, but reserve still to give, lest your deities be despised. Lend to each man enough that one need not lend to another. For were your godheads to borrow of men, men would forsake the gods. Make the meat be beloved more than the man that gives it. Let no assembly of twenty be without a score of villains. If there sit twelve women at the table, let a dozen of them be as they are. The rest of your fees, O oh gods, the senator of Athens, together with the common tag of people, what is amiss in them, you gods make suitable for destruction. For these, my present friends, as they are to me nothing, so in nothing bless them, and to nothing are they welcome. Uncover dogs and lap. The dishes are uncovered that contain only water and stones. What does his lordship mean? I know not. May you a better feast never behold, you not of mouth friends. Oh, smoke and lukewarm water is your perfection. This is Timon's last, who, stuck and spangled with your flatteries, washes it off and sprinkles in your faces your reeky villainy. Timon throws mm. water in their faces. Live loathed and long, most smiling, smooth, detested parasites, courteous destroyers, affable wolves, meat bears, you fools of fortune, treacher, trencher friends, times flies, cap and knee slaves, vapors and my minute minute jacks of man and beast, the infinite malady crust you quite all. The guests what? stand. Uh, dost thou go so? Take thy physic first, thou too, and thou, 
next day I will lend thee money. Borrow none. Time in attacks them throwing dishes. But all in motion, and swath be no feast where at a villain's not a welcome guest. <laughs> Burn how sink Athens henceforth hated be of Timon, man, and all humanity. Exit Timon. How now, my lord? Know you the quality of Lord Timon's fury? He's he's but a mad lord, and naught but you persuades him. He gave me a jewel the other day, and now he has beat it out of my hat. Let's make no stay. Lord Timon's mad. I feel it upon my bones. One day he gives us diamonds, next day stones. Exeunt, Act 4, Scene 1. Outside the walls of Athens, enter mm -hmm. Timon. Let me look back upon thee. Oh, thou wall that girdlest in those wolves. Dive in the earth and fence not Athens. Matrons turn incontinent. Obedience fail in children. Slaves and fools pluck the grave wrinkled senate from the bench and minister in their steads. To general filths convert to the instant green virginity. Do it in your parents' eyes. Bankrupts, hold fast, rather than render back, out with your knives and cut your trusters' throats. Bound servants, steal. Large-handed robbers your grave masters are and pill by law. Maid to thy master's bed, thy mistress is of the brothel. Son of sixteen, pluck the line, crutch from thy old limping sire, with it beat out his brains. Piety and fear, religion to the gods, peace, justice, truth, Domestic awe, night rest and neighborhood, instruction, manners, mysteries and trades, degrees, observances, customs and laws, decline to your confounding contraries and let confusion live. Plagues incident to men, your potent and infectious fevers heap on Athens ripe for stroke. Oh, cold sciatica, cripple our senators that their limbs may halt as lamely as their manners. Lust and liberty, Creep in the minds and marrows of our youth against the stream of virtue they may strive and drown themselves in riot, itches, blains, so all the Athenian bosoms and their crop be general leprosy. Breath infect breath that their society as their friendship may merely poison. Nothing I'll bear from thee but nakedness, thou detestable town. Take thou that too with multiplying bands. Time and will to the woods where he shall find the unkindest beast more kinder than mankind. The gods confound, hear me, you good gods all, the Athenians both within and out that wall, and grant us time and grows, his hate may grow to the whole race of mankind, high and low. Amen. Exit Timon. Scene two, Athens. A room in Timon's house. Enter Flavius with Servilius. Here are you, Master Steward. Where's our master? Are we undone? Cast off? Nothing remaining? Black. What should I say to you? I'm as poor as you. Such a house broke. So noble a master fallen. All gone and not. One friend to take his fortune by the arm and go along with him as we do turn our backs from our companion thrown into his grave. So his familiar, familiars to his burdened fortune, buried fortunes slink all away, leave their false vows with him like empty purses picked and his poor self, a dedicated beggar to the air with his disease of all shunned poverty walks like contempt alone. Enter other servants who cross the stage dejectedly. More of our fellows. All broken implements of a ruined house. Yet do your hearts wear to Timon's livery that, that see I by our faces. We are fellows still, serving alike in, in, the, in sorrow, leaking in our bark, and we poor mates stand on the dying deck, hearing that the surges threat, we must all part into the 
Jesse Avare. Good fellows all, the latest of my wealth I'll share with you. Wherever we shall meet, for time and sake, let's yet be fellows. Let Flavius hold out money for all. Let each take some. Nay, put out all your hands, not one word more. Thus part we rich in sorrow, parting poor. <laughs> Servants embrace and exit. Ah, poor honest lord, brought low by his own heart, undone by goodness. Strange, unusual blood, when man's worst sin is he does too much good. <laughs> Who then dares to be half so kind again? For bounty that makes gods do still more men. My dearest Lord, blessed to be most accursed, rich only to be wretched, thy great fortunes are made thy chief afflictions. Alas, kind Lord, he's flung in rage from this ungrateful seat of monstrous friends, nor is he with him to supply his life or that which can command it. I'll follow and inquire him out. I'll ever serve his mind with my best will Whilst I have gold, I'll be his steward still. Exit Flavius. Scene three, woods and cave near the seashore. Enter Timon from the cave. Oh, blessed reading sun, draw from the earth rotten humidity. Below thy sister's orb infect the air. Twinned brothers of one womb, whose procreation, residence, and birth scarce is divided, and touch them with several fortunes. The greater scorns the lesser. Not nature, to whom all sores lay siege, can bear great fortune, but by contempt of nature. Raise me this beggar and deny it that lord. The senators shall bear contempt hereditary. The beggar, native honor. It is the pasture lards the rather's sides, the want that makes him lean. Who dares, who dares in purity of manhood stand upright and say, this man's a flatterer. If one be, so are they all. For every grease of fortune is smoothed by that below. The learned pay ducks to the golden fool. All's obloquy. There's nothing level in our cursed natures but direct villainy. Therefore be abhorred all feasts, societies, and throngs of men. His semblable, yea, himself, time and disdains. Destruction, bang, mankind. Earth, yield me roots. <sighs> Simon starts digging in the ground. Who seeks for better of thee, sources palate with thy most operant poison. <laughs> what is here? Gold? Yellow? Glittering, precious gold. No, gods, I am no idle votarist. Roots, you clear heavens. Thus much of this will make black, white, foul, fair, wrong, right, base, noble, old, young, towered, valiant. Oh, you gods, why this? What this, you gods? Why this will lug your priests and servants from your sides, fuck stout men's pillows from below their heads. This yellow slave will knit and break religions, bless the accursed, make the whore leprosy adored, place thieves and give them title, knee and approbation with senators on the bench. This is it that makes the whoppened widow wed again. Come, damned earth, thou common whore of mankind. I will make thee do thy right nature. March afar off. Ha! Ah, a drum? Thou art quick, but yet I'll bury thee. Thou wilt go, strong thief, when gouty keepers of thee cannot stand. Nay, stay thou out for earnest. <clears throat> he buries the gold, keeping some out. Enter Alcibiades with drums and a fife in warlike manner, and Timandra. What art thou there? Speak. A beast, as thou art, the canker nor thy heart for showing me again the eyes of man. What is thy name? Is man so hateful to thee that th that art thyself a man? I am a misanthrope and hate mankind. For thy part, I do wish thou wert a dog that I might love thee something. I know thee well. But in thy fortunes am unlearned and strange. I know thee too, and more than that I know thee, I not desire to know. Follow thy drum. With man's blood paint the ground ghouls. Ghouls! Religious canons, civil laws are cruels. And what should war be? This 
fell whore of thine hath in her more destruction than thy sword for all her cherubin look. Thy lips rot off. I will not kiss thee. Then the rot returns to thine own lips again. How came the noble time into this change? As the moon does, by wanting light to give. But then renew I could not, like the moon. There were no sons to borrow of. Noble Timon, what friendship may I do thee? Promise me friendship, but perform none. If thou wilt not promise, the gods plague thee, for thou art a man. If thou dost perform, confound thee, for thou art a man. I have heard in some sort of thy miseries. Thou sawest them when I had prosperity. I see them now. Then was a blessed time. As thine is now held with a brace of harlots. Is this the Athenian minion whom the world voiced so regardfully? Art thou to Mandra? Yes. Be a whore still. They love thee not that use thee. Give them diseases, leaving with thee their lust. Hang thee, monster! Now pardon him, sweet Tamandra, for his wits are drowned and lost in his calamities. I have but little gold of late, brave Timon. I pray thee, beat thy drum and get thee gone. I am thy friend, and pity thee, dear Timon. How dost thou pity him who thou dost trouble? I had rather be alone. Why, oh, fare thee well. Here. There's some gold for thee. Keep it. I cannot eat it. When I have laid proud Athens on a heap. Worst thou against Athens? Ay, Timon, and have cause. The gods confound them all in thy conquest, and thee after when thou hast conquered. But why me, Timon? That by killing of villains thou wast born to conquer my country. Put up thy gold. Go on. <laughs> Here's gold. Go on. Be as a planetary plague when Jove will, or some high vice city hang his poison in the sick air. Let not thy sword skip one. Pity not honored age for his white beard. He is a usurer. Strike me the counterfeit matron. It is her habit only that is honest. Herself's aboard. Let not the virgin's cheek make soft thy trenchant sword for those milk paps that through the window bars bore at men's eyes are not within the leaf of pity writ, but set them down, horrible traitors. Spare not the babe whose dimpled smiles from fools exhaust their mercy. Think it a bastard whom the oracle hath doubtfully pronounced thy throat shall cut and mince it sans remorse. Swear against objects, put armor on thine ears and on thine eyes, whose proof nor yells of mothers Maids, nor babes, nor sight of priests in holy vestments bleeding shall pierce a jot. Time in office gold. There's gold to pay soldiers. Make large confusion and thy fury spent confounded be thyself. Speak not, be gone. Hast thou gold yet? I'll take the gold thou givest me, not all thy counsel. Dost thou or dost thou not heaven's curse upon thee I give a me some gold good timon enough to make whore more her trade and to make whores aboard hold up you sluts your aprons mountain he begins throwing gold at their aprons you are not oathable although I know you'll swear terribly swear into strong shudders and to heavenly agues the immortal gods that hear you spare your oaths I'll trust to your condition. Be a whore still, and he whose pious breath seeks to convert you, be strong and whore. Allure him, burn him up. Let your close fire predominate his smoke, and be no turncoat. Yet may your pain six months be quite contrary, and thatch your poor thin roofs with burdens of the dead. Some that were hanged, no matter. Wear them, betray with them. Whore still, paint till a horse may mire upon your face a pox of wrinkles. Uh, believe it, that we'll do anything for gold. <laughs> Consumptions so in hollow bones of man, strike their sharp shins and mar men spurring, crack the lawyer's voice that he may never more false title plead, nor sound his quill at shrilly. 
Oh, the flamen that scolds against the quality of flesh and not believes himself. Plague all that your activity may defeat and quell the source of all erection. There's more gold. Do your do you damn others and let this damn you and ditches grave you all. <laughs> more counsel with more money, bounteous Timon. More whore, more mischief first. Strike up the drum toward Athens. Farewell, Timon. If I thrive well, I'll visit thee again. If I hope well, I'll never see thee more. I never did thee harm. Yes, thou spokest well of me. Callst thou that harm? Men daily find it. Get thee away and take thy beagle with thee. Drum beats. Exeunt Alcibiades and Simandra. Timon returns to digging. That nature, being sick of man's unkindness, should yet be hungry. Come, and mother, thou whose womb unmeasurable and infinite breast teems and feeds all, whose self same metal, whereof thy proud child, arrogant man, is puffed. Yield him, who all thy human sons doth hate, from forth thy plenteous bosom, one poor root, and sneer thy fertile and conceptious womb. Let it no more bring out in grateful man. Go great with tigers, dragons, wolves, and bears. Team with new monsters whom thy upward face hath to the marbled mansion all above never presented. Oh, a root, dear thanks. Enter Apimantus. More man, plague, plague. I was directed hither. Men report thou dost affect my manners, and dost use them. Tis then because thou dost not keep a dog whom I would imitate. Consumption catch thee. This is in thee a nature but infected. A poor, unmanly, melancholy spurn from change of fortune. Why this spade? This place? This slave, like habits and these looks of care. Thy flatterers yet wear silk, drink wine, lie soft, hug their diseased perfumes, and have forgot that ever time and was. Shame not these woods by putting on the cunning of a carper. Be thou a flatterer now, and seek to thrive by that which has undone thee. Hinge thy knee. And let this very breath, whom thou'lt observe, blow off thy cap, praise his most vicious strain, and call it excellent. Thou wast told thus, thou givest, gavest thine ears, like tapsters that bid welcome to knaves and all approachers. Tis most just that thou turn rascal. Hadst thou wealth again, rascals should have it. Do not assume my likeness. Were I like thee, I'd throw away myself. Thou hast cast away thyself, being like thyself. A madman so long, now a fool. What thinkest that the bleak air, thy boisterous chamberlain, will put thy shirt on warm? Will these mossed trees that have outlived the eagle, page thy heels, and skip where thou pointest out? Will the cold brook, candied with ice, caudle thy morning taste to cure thy overnight surfeit? Call the creatures whose naked natures live in all the spite of reekful heaven, whose bare unhoused trunks to the conflicting elements exposed answer mere nature. Bid them flatter thee, O oh, thou shalt find Fool of thee, depart. I love thee better now than ever I did. I hate thee worse. Why? Thou flatterest misery. I flatter not, but say thou art a caitiff. Why dost thou seek me out? To vex thee. Always a villain's office or a fool's. Dost please thyself in it? Aye. What a knave, too? <laughs> if thou didst put this sour cold habit on to castigate thy pride, twere well, but thou dost it enforcedly. Thou dost courier be again 
wert thou not beggar? Willing misery outlives incertain pomp. Best state, contentless, hath a distracted and most wretched being, worse than the worst, content. Thou shouldest desire to die, being miserable. Not by his breath that is more miserable, thou art a slave whom fortune's tender arm with favor never clasped, but bred a dog. Hadst thou, like us, from our first swathe proceeded the sweet degrees that this brief world af affords, to such as may the passive drugs of it freely command, thou wouldst have plunged thyself in general riot, melted down thy youth in different beds of lust, and never learned the icy precepts of respect, but followed the sugared game before thee. But myself, who had the world as my confectionery, the mouths, the tongues, the eyes and hearts of men at duty, more than I could frame employment, that numberless upon me stuck as leaves do on the oak, hive with one winter's brush fell from their boughs and left me open, bare, for every storm that blows, I to bear this, that never knew but better is some burden. Thy nature did commence in sufferance, Time hath made thee hard on it. Why shouldst thou hate men? They never flattered thee. What hast thou given? If thou wilt curse thy father, that poor rag must be thy subject, who in spite put stuff to some she-beggar and, and compounded thee. If thou hadst not been born the worst of men, thou hadst been a knave and a flatterer. Art thou proud yet? I, that I am not thee. Huh. <laughs> I, that I was no prodigal. I, that I am one now, where all the wealth I have shut up in thee, I give thee leave to hang it, get thee gone, that the whole life of Athens were in this. Thus would I eat it. He ah. eats a root. Here, I will mend thy feast. Apimantus offers him food. First mend my company, take away thyself. So I shall mend mine, own by thy lack of thine. It is not well mended so, it is botched. If not, I would it were. What wouldst thou have to Athens? Thee thither in a whirlwind. If thou wilt, tell them that I have gold. Look, so I have. Here is no use for gold. The best and truest, for here it sleeps and does no hire at all. Where liest the nights, Timon? Under that's above me. Where feedst thou a day's Apimantus? Where my stomach finds meat, or rather where I eat it. Would poison were obedient and knew my mind. Where wouldst thou send it? To sauce thy dishes. The middle of humanity thou never knewest, but the extremity of both ends. When thou wast in thy guilt and thy perfume, they mocked thee for too much curiosity. In thy rags thou knowest none, but art despised for the contrary. There's a medlar for thee, eat it. Uh, what I hate I feed not. Dost that dost hate a medlar? Aye, though it look like thee. <laughs> and thou hated meddlers sooner than thou, sh thou shouldst have loved thyself better now. What man didst thou ever know unthrift that was beloved after his means? Who, without those means thou talkst of, didst thou ever know beloved? Myself. I understand thee. Thou hadst some means to keep a dog. Uh -huh. What things in the world canst thou nearest compare to thy flatterers? Women nearest, but men. Men are the things themselves. What wouldst thou do with the world, Apimantus, if it lay in thy power? Give it to the beasts, to be rid of the men. Wouldst thou have thyself fall in the confusion of men and remain a beasts with the beasts? Ay, Timon. A beastly ambition which the gods grant thee to attain to. What beast couldst thou be that were not subject to a beast? And what a beast art thou already that seest not thy loss in transformation? If thou couldst please me with speaking to me, thou mightest have hit upon it here. The commonwealth of Athens is become a forest of beasts. Yonder comes a poet and a painter. 
the plague of company lights upon me. I will fear to catch it and give way. When I know not what else to do, I'll see thee again. And there is nothing living but thee, thou shalt be welcome. <laughs> thou art the cap of all the fools alive. A plague on thee. Thou art too bad to curse. Away, thou issue of a mangy dog. Carla does kill me that thou art alive. I swoon to see thee. <laughs> Would thou wouldest burst. Thou tedious rogue, I am sorry. I shall lose a stone by thee. Climate <laughs> throws a stone at him. Beast. Slave. Toad. Rogue, rogue, rogue. I am sick of this false world and will love naught but even the mere necessities upon it. And time and presently prepare thy grave. Why, where the light foam, the sea may beat thy gravestone daily. Make thine epitaph that death in me and others' lives may laugh. Live and love thy misery. Long live so and so die. I am quit. Exit Apomantis. More things. Oh. More things like men. Eat time in and abhor them. Enter first and second bandits. Where should we have this gold? If it is some poor fragment, some slender, sort of his remainder, the men want of gold, and the falling from of his friends drove him to, into his melancholy. It is noised he hath a mass of treasure. Let us make the essay upon him. If he care not for it, he will supply us easily. If he covetously reserve it, how shall us get it? True. For he bears it not about him, tis his. Is not this he? Tis his description. He, I know him, save the Timon. Now thieves? Uh, soldiers, we are not thieves, but men that much do want. Your greatest want is you want much of meat. Why should you want? Behold, the earth hath roots. Within this mile break forth a hundred springs. The oaks bear mast, the briars scarlet hips, the bounteous huswipe nature on each bush lays her full mess before you. Want? Why want? We cannot live on grass, on berries, water, as beasts and birds and fishes nor on the beasts themselves, the birds and fishes, yet must eat men. Yet thanks I, must you calm that you are thieves professed, that you work not in holier shapes, for there is boundless theft in limited professions. Rascal thieves, here's gold. He gives them gold. Go, take wealth and lives together. Do villainy, do. Since you protest to do it, like workmen, I'll example you with thievery. The sun's a thief, and with his great attraction, robs the vast sea. The moon's an arrant thief, and her pale fire she snatches from the sun. The sea's a thief, whose liquid surge re resolves the moon into salt tears. The earth's a thief that feeds and breeds by a composture stolen from general excrement. Each thing's a thief. The laws you curb and whip in their rough power has unchecked theft. Love not yourselves. Away, rob one another. There's more gold. Cut Give throat. them gold. Cut throats all that you meet are thieves. To Athens go, break open shops. Nothing can you steal, but thieves do lose it. Steal no less for this I give you, and gold confound you howsoever. Amen has almost charmed me from my profession by persuading me to it. I'll believe him as an enemy and give over my trade. Let us first see peace in Athens. There is no time so miserable but a man may be true. Exeunt bandits, enter Flavius. Oh, you gods! Jean despised and ruinous man, my lord, full of decay and failing, monument and wonder of good deeds evilly bestowed. 
What an alteration of honor has desperate want made. What vilest thing upon the earth than friends who can bring the noblest minds to basest ends. How rarely does it meet with this time's guise when man was wished to love his enemies. Grant I may ever love and rather woo those that would mischief me than those that do. That's caught me in his eye. I will present my honest grief unto him and as my Lord still serve him with my life. My dearest master. Away, what art thou? I, you forgot me, sir. Well, I dost ask that. I have forgot all men. Then if thou grantest thou art a man, I have forgot thee. An honest poor servant of yours. Then I know thee not, or I never had an honest man about me. All I kept were knaves to serve in meat to villains. The gods are witness. Never did poor Stuart wear a truer grief for his undone lord than mine eyes for you. Flavius weeps. I beg of you to do me good, my lord, to accept my grief, and while this poor whelp lasts, to entertain me as your steward still. He offers money. Had I a steward, so true, so just, and now so comfortable? It almost turns my dangerous nature mild. Let me behold thy face. Surely this man was born of woman. Forgive my general and acceptless rashness, you perpetual silver gods. I do proclaim one honest man, mistake me not, but one. No more, I pray, and he's a steward. How fain would I have hated all mankind, and thou redeemedst thyself, that all save thee I fell with curses. Methinks thou art more honest now than wise, for by oppressing and betraying me thou mightst have sooner got another service. For many so arrive at second masters upon their first lord's neck. But tell me true, but I must ever doubt, though ne'er so sure. Is not thy kindness subtle, covetous, if not an assuring kindness, and as rich men deal gifts, expecting in return twenty for one? No, my most worthy master, in whose breast doubt and suspect, alas, are placed too late. You should have feared false times when you did feast. Suspect still comes with an estate is least. That with I, which I show, heaven knows, is merely love duty and zeal to your unmatched mind, care of your food and living, and believe it, my most honored Lord, for any benefit that points to me, either in hope or present, I'd exchange for this one wish that you had power and wealth to requite me by making rich yourself. Look, see, just so, so singly honest man. Here, take he offers gold. The gods out of my misery have sent thee treasure. Go, live rich and happy. But thus conditioned, thou shalt build from men. Hate all, curse all, show charity to none, but let the famished flesh slide from the bone ere thou relieve the beggar. Give to dogs what thou deniest to men. Let prisons swallow them. Deaths wither them to nothing. Be men like blasted woods, and may diseases lick up their false bloods. And so farewell and thrive. Oh, let me stay and comfort you, my master. If thou hadst curses, stay not. Fly whilst thou art blessed and free. Ne'er see thou, man, and let me ne'er see thee. Exit Flavius. Hyman returns to his cave. Act 5, Scene 1, The Woods, before Hyman's cave. Enter the poet and painter, Hyman watching them from his cave. As I took note of the place, it cannot be far where he abides. He thought of him. Does the rumor hold the truth that he is so full of gold? Certain, Alcibiades reports it. Tamantra had gold of him. He likewise enriched poor straggling soldiers with great quantity. Tis said he gave unto a steward a high mighty sum. Then this breaking of this has but been but a try for his friends. Nothing else. 
you shall see him a palm in Athens again and flourish with the highest. Therefore, tis not amiss we tender our loves to him in this supposed distress of his. It will show honestly in us and is very likely to load our purposes with what they travel for, if it be a just true report that goes of his having. What have you now to present unto him? Uh, nothing at this time but my visitation. Only I will promise him an excellent peace. I must serve him so too. Tell him of an intent that's coming towards him. Good is the best. Mm -hmm. Promising is the very air of the time. It opens the eye of expectation. Performance is ever the duller for his act, but in the plainer and simpler kind of people, the deed of saying is quite out of use. To promise is most courtly and fashionable. Performance is a kind of will or testament which argues a great sickness in his judgment that makes it. Excellent workman, thou canst not paint a man so bad as is thyself. I am thinking what I shall say. I have provided for him. It must be a personating of himself, a satire against the softness of prosperity with a discovery of the infinite flatteries that follow youth and violence. <laughs> Must thou needs stand for the villain in thine own work? Wilt thou whip thine own faults in other men? <laughs> do so. I have gold for thee. Then do we sin against our own estate when we may profit me and come too late. When the day serves before black-cornered night, why went thou once by free and offered light? Come. I'll meet you at the turn. What a god's gold that he is worshipped in a baser temple than where swine feed. Tis thou that rigs the bark and plowst the foam. Settlest admired reverence in a slave. To thee be worship and thy saints for I be crowned with plagues that thee alone obey. Fit I meet them. <sighs> Timon comes forward. Oh, worthy time <laughs> Our late noble master! I once lived to see two honest men. Oh, I've been often of your open bounty tasted. Here you were retired, your friends fallen off, whose thankless nature, all oh, abhorred spirits. Not all the whips of heaven are large enough. What should be to you, who star like nobleness? gave life and influence to their whole being, I am wrecked and cannot cover the monstrous bulk of this ingratitude with any size of word. Let it go naked. Men may see it the better. You that are honest, by being what you are, make them best seen and known. Uh, he and myself have travailed in the great shower of your gifts and sweetly felt it. Aye, you are honest men. We are hither come to offer you our service. Most honest men. Why, how shall I requite you? Can you eat roots and drink cold water? No. What we can do, uh, we'll do to do you service. They're honest men. You've heard that I have gold. I am sure you have. Speak truth. You're honest men. Uh, so it is said, my noble lord, but... Therefore came not my friend, nor I. Good, honest men, thou drawst a counterfeit best in all Athens. Thou art indeed the best, thou counterfeitst most lively. Uh, so, so, my lord. Even so, sir, as I say. And for thy fiction, why thy verse swells with stuff so fine and smooth, that thou art even natural in thine art. But for all this, my honest-natured friends, I must needs say you have a little fault. Marry, tis not monstrous in you, neither wish I you to make pains to mend. You seek your honour to make it known to us. You'll take, you'll take it ill. Most thankfully, my lord. Will you indeed? Doubt it not, worthy lord. There's never a one of you but trusts a knave that mightily deceives you. Do we, my lord? 
Aye, and you hear him cog, see him dissemble, know his gross patchery, love him, feed him, keep him in your bosom, yet remain assured that he's a made-up villain. I know none such, my lord. Nor I. Look you, I love you well. I'll give you gold. Rid me these villains from your companies, hang them or stab them, drown them in a draft, confound them by some curse and come to me, I'll give you gold enough. Name them, my lord, let's know them. You that way and you this, but two in company, each man apart, all single and alone, yet an arch villain keeps his company. If where thou art two villains, shalt not be, come not near him. If thou wouldst not reside, but where one villain is, then him abandon. Hence, pack, there's gold. You came for gold, you slaves. You have worked for me. There's payment for you. Hence, you are an alchemist. Make gold of that. Out, rascal dogs. Hyman <clears throat> beats them out and then retires to his cave. Enter Flavius and Senator. It is in vain that you would speak with Timon, for he has said so only to himself that nothing but himself, which looks like man, is friendly with him. Bring me to his cave. It is our part and promise to the Athenians to speak with Timon. At all times alike, men are not still the same. Twas time and griefs that framed him thus. Time with his fair hand, offering the fortune of his former days, the former man may make him. Bring me to him and chance it as it may. Here is his cave. Peace and content be here. Lord Timon, Timon, look out and speak to friends. The Athenians, by one of their most reverend senate, greet thee. Oh, speak to him, noble Timon. Timon comes from his cave. Thou son that comforts, burn. Speak and be hanged, for each true word a blister, and each false be as cauterizing to the root of the tongue, consuming it with speaking. Worthy Timon. Of none but such as you, and you of Timon. The senators of Athens greet thee, Timon. I thank them and would send them back the plague, could I but catch it for them. Oh, forget what we are sorry for ourselves in thee. The senators with one consent of love entreat thee back to Athens. Who have thought on special dignities, which vacant lie for thy best use in wearing. They confess towards the unforgetfulness to general, gross which now the public body, which doth seldom play the recanter, feeling in itself a lack of Timon's aid, hath sense withal of its own fail, restraining aid to Timon, and send forth us to make their sorrow rendered, together with a recompense more fruitful than their offense can weigh down by the dram. Aye, even such heaps and sums of love and... Wealth, as shall to thee blot out what wrongs were theirs, and write in thee the figures of their love, even to read them thine. You witch me in it, surprise me to the very brink of tears. Lend me a fool's heart and a woman's eyes, and I'll beweep these comforts, worthy senator. Therefore, so please thee to return with us and of our Athens, thine and ours, to take the captainship Thou shalt be met with thanks, allowed with absolute power, and, and thy good name live with authority. So soon shall we drive back Alcibiades, the approaches wild, who like a boar too savage doth root up his country's peace, and shake his threatening sword against the wall of Athens. Therefore, Timon... Well, uh, sir, I will. Therefore, I will, sir. Thus, if Alcibiades kill... My countrymen, let Alcibiades know this of Timon, that Timon cares not, but if be sack fair Athens and take our goodly aged men by the beards, giving our holy virgins to the stain of contumelious, beastly, mad-brained war, then let him know and tell him Timon speaks it in pity of our aged and our youth. I cannot choose but tell him that I care not, and let him take, take it at worst, 
for their knives care not while you have throats to answer. For myself, there's not a whittle in the unruly camp, but I do prize it at my love before the reverend throat in Athens. And so I leave you to the protection of the prosperous gods as thieves to keepers. Oh, stay not, all's in vain. Why, I was writing of my epitaph. It will be seen tomorrow. My long sickness of health and living now begins to mend, and nothing brings me all things. Go, live still. Be Alcibiades your plague, new his, and last so long enough. We speak in vain. But yet I love my country and am not one that rejoices in the common wreck, as common brute do put it. That's well spoke. Commend me to my living countrymen, my loving these, these words become your lips as they pass through them and enter in our ears like great triumphers and their applauding gates. Commend me to them and tell them that to ease them of their griefs, their fears of hostile strokes, their aches, losses, their pangs of love with other incidents throws, that nature's fragile vessel doth sustain in life's uncertain voyage, I will some kindness do them. I'll teach them to prevent wild As Alcibiades wrath. I like this well. He will return again. I have a tree which grows here in my clothes that mine own use invites me to cut down, and shortly must I fell it. Tell my friends, Tell Athens in the sequence of degree from high to low throughout that whoso pleased to stop affliction, let him take his haste, come hither, ere my tree hath felt the axe and hang himself. I pray you, do my greeting. Trouble him no further, thus you still shall find him. Come not to me again, but say to Athens, time and hath made his everlasting mansion upon the beached verge of the salt flood, who once a day with his embossed froth the turbulent surge shall cover. Thither come and let my gravestone be your oracle. Lips, let sour words go by and language end. What is a mist, plague and infection mend. Graves only be men's works and death their gain. Sun, hide thy beams. Timon hath done his reign. Exit Timon. His discontents are unremovably coupled to nature. Our hope in him is dead. Let us return and strain what other means is left unto us in our dear peril. Requires swift foot. The enemy's drum is heard and fearful, fearful scouring doth choke the air with dust. In and prepare. Ours is the fall, I fear. Our foes the snare. Exeunt. Seen too later that day, the woods. See Timon's cave and a rude tomb seen. Enter soldier seeking Timon. By all, all descriptions, this should be the place. Who's here? Speak, ho. No answer. What is this? He reads an epitaph. Timon is dead, who hath outstretched his span. Some beast reared his, this, there, there does not live a man. Dead. Sure, and this is his grave. What's on his tomb? I cannot read. The character I'll take with wax. Our captain hath in every figure skill, an aged interpreter, though young in days before proud Athens he set down by this whose fall the mark of his ambition is. Exit, soldier. Scene three before the walls of Athens. Trumpets sound. Enter Alcibiades with his powers. <laughs> sound to this coward and lascivious town our terrible approach. A parley sounded. Enter Senator on the walls. 
till now you have gone on and filled the time with all licentious measure, making your wills the scope of justice. Till now, myself and such as slept within the shadow of your power have wandered with our traversed arms and breathed our sufferance vainly. Now the time is flush when crouching marrow in the bearer strong cries of itself no more. No breathless wrong shall sit and pant in your great chairs of ease with and Percy insolence shall break his wind with fear and horrid flight. Noble and young, when thy first griefs were but a mere conceit, ere thou hadst power or we had cause to fear, we sent to thee to give thy rages balm, to wipe out our ingratitude with loves above their quantity. So did we woo transformed time into our city's love by humble message and by promised means. We were not all unkind, nor all deserve the common stroke of war. These walls of ours were not erected by their hands from whom you have received your griefs. Nor are they such that these great towers, trophies, and schools should fall for private faults in them. All have not offended. For those that were, it is not square to take. On those that are, revenge. Crimes like lands are not inherited. Then, dear countrymen, bring in thy ranks, but leave without thy rage. Spare the Athenian cradle and those kin which in the bluster of thy wrath must fall with those that have offended. Like a shepherd approach the fold and call the infected forth, but kill not altogether. What thou wilt, thou rather shalt enforce it with a smile than hew to it with thy sword. Set but thy foot against our rampired gates and they shall ope, so thou wilt send thy gentle heart before to say thou'lt enter friendly. Throw thy glove, or any token of thine honor else, that thou wilt use thy wars as thy right dress and not as our confusion. All those powers shall make their harbor in our town till we have sealed thy full desire. And there's my glove. Descend and open your uncharged ports. Those enemies of Timon's and mine own whom you yourselves shall set out for reproof, fall, and no more. And to atone your fears with my more noble meaning, not a man shall pass his quarter or offend the stream of regular justice in your city's bounds, but shall be rendered to your public laws at heaviest answer. Tis most nobly spoken. Descend and keep your words. The senators descend and open the gates. Enter soldier with a wax tablet. My noble general, Timon is dead, entombed upon the very hem o the sea, and on this on, on his gravestone, this in sculpture, which with wax I brought away, whose soft impression interprets for my poor ignorance. Here lies a wretched course of wretched soul bereft. Seek not my name, a plague consume your wicked caitiffs left. Here lie I, Timon, who alive or living man did hate. Pass by and curse thy fill, but pass and stay not here thy gate. These will express in thee thy latter spirits though thou abhorst us in us our human grief, scorned our brains flow, and those our droplets which from niggard nature fell, yet rich conceit taught thee to make vast Neptune weep, for I on thy low grave, on faults forgiven. Dead is noble Timon, of whose memory hereafter more Bring me into your city, and I will use the olive with my sword. Make war breed peace. Make peace stint war. Make each prescribe to other as each other's leech. 
let our drums strike. Drums. Exeunt. End of play. Huzzah! <laughs> There's...